Hey everybody, it's Annie from the Space Science Institute and hi, my name is <laughs> Stephanie Vero Fields. I am the relationship manager from the Space Science Institute. So thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Um, I know most of you were scheduled for the um, webinar that had to be canceled. So thank you for coming back and joining us. Your uh, benefit for that is you get a much smaller group uh, than everyone else is going to get. Um, this is going to be a, as far as our webinars go, pretty informal presentation. Um, Oh, I don't have the clicker. Could you click, please? Um, so pretty informal presentation. We don't even know how to click the buttons for it, apparently. Um, so I did want to make sure real quick, go ahead one more. Um, if everybody has microphone capabilities, I'd like you to check them real quick um, so that when we start talking later, you're ready for that. If you don't have a microphone, please don't worry about it. You can just chat, um, type your responses in the chat. Um, but I do want everyone to feel free uh, to use their microphone if they have one. So would you all mind? trying to unmute yourselves and seeing if that works. I might have to click the button for all of you that says allow to talk. One second. I'll see if I can help with that. Thank you. This is Anita. Hi, Anita. We hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Anybody else want to try their mic real quick? Vicki and Kathy, it looks like you're good to go. I heard a noise. Hi, this is Paula. Can you hear me? Hi, Paula. Paula Neems? Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Excellent. It's one big happy family. All right, Kathy doesn't have a mic, no worries. No worries. So I'm gonna keep talking. If you could just keep checking as people pop up um, and do that for them, that would be yeah. great. Um, so yeah, so just a quick agenda for today. Again, this is gonna be um, pretty loosey-goosey. If you need to stop and ask any questions, please feel free. Uh, you can type it in the chat or just unmute. Again, only 10 or 12 of us, not a huge deal. Um, so we've kind of already done the welcome and introductions. If you guys haven't said what library you're from, please do go ahead and do that in the chat. Um, I want to give you just a quick 30 second overview of the Our Planet Earth campaign. Pretty sure you already know about it since you're here in this room, but we want to double check. Um, then we'll do a short little presentation section um, on what the heck a community dialogue is, um, since you've all agreed to do one. Uh, we'll talk briefly about requirements, and I'm going to put all the air quotes in the world around requirements. This is, again, really flexible. There are things we'd really like you to do, but if they don't work out for your library, again, not a big deal. Uh, then we'll open the floor up for discussion, um, question, Q&A. Um, we'd like to get you guys started um, with just some ideas of what you might want to be doing for your community dialogue and to understand again how flexible this is and that everybody has different ideas for what they want to be doing and there's no one prescribed way to do this. Next slide please. So again our Planet Earth campaign. So this national campaign is a convergence of three events uh, during April, Citizen Science Month, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, um, and ALA's recent adoption of sustainability um, as a core value, which is very exciting. Assuming ALA doesn't get canceled this year, I hope we see you all um, at the Sustain RT event. Um, if it does get canceled, we'll see you online. Uh, <laughs> um, we wanted to make it clear that the um, community dialogue in all of your Earth Day events, especially this year being the 50th anniversary, don't feel like you have to contain your events to April 20th. Um, or even to Earth Day itself. We can have Earth Year if we want, so don't worry about timing for any of this. Um, we're just excited that people are wanting to work on this project. Next, please. So the three slide overview of community dialogues, um, I will warn you, I have done full day presentations on this. I've done multi-day workshops on this. So this is very much the bare bones, but honestly, um, that's really all you need uh, to get started. So community dialogues are informal conversations. Ooh, Paula says she just lost audio. Can anyone else still hear me? Or is this a Paula problem? You all hear me? <laughs> Anita can hear us. 
Okay. okay. Could you uh, walk Paula through just to have her unconnect her audio and reconnect it? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, so yes, community dialogues are informal conversations with community stakeholders, leaders, and members. Um, so what does that mean? It means pretty much whatever you want it to mean. Um, when we started using this framework about five years ago, our uh, Discover Health, Discovery La Salud project, uh, my initial intent was to just sit down with library staff and our one health partner um, in the community from the Area Health Education Center. And I just wanted them to talk to me about what the health concerns were um, in their region and what cool stuff they wanted in their exhibit. It was literally just about building an exhibit. Um, as we started having those conversations, um, we actually noticed the library staff and the AHEC members were bringing more and more people to the room, uh, people who cared very much about homeless members of the community who represented the African-American population, people who really had a big stake in that community and wanted to make sure um, that their constituents' voices were heard. Um, so that little foray into um, exhibit co-development actually turned in uh, to this big uh, dialogue strategy. Um, as far as what a stakeholder leader and member looks like, again, up to you. Um, we initially encourage people to do this kind of as a stakeholder dialogue, right? So who are the movers and shakers in your community um, that can get stuff done and rally people around a cause? Uh, some libraries have stuck to that. Others have expanded their definition of a stakeholder. My favorite stakeholder, and I hope Brooks isn't on the line because he's heard this story like 30 times now. Uh, my favorite stakeholder was the library who um, the guy from the hot dog stand was their main stakeholder and their key informant because they were in a food desert. So he literally talked to everybody in the town every single day. He knew everybody's business um, and he knew what people needed more importantly. So he was a really important member um, in that library's dialogue, but not something I would have suggested before. Um, other libraries have taken a step away. Um, from the movers and shakers idea and gone straight to community members. Um, so did this more like an open forum kind of thing, um, have to put a few more rules in it so it doesn't like turn into a Parks and Rec Leslie Nope situation, right? For those of you who know the reference. Um, but still a really good way um, to talk to people who have the time and the energy to make a difference in their community. Um, I will give you the um, website address later on in this presentation where you can get more information and the full up guides on the community dialogues. Um, in there, there's one specifically about teen led community dialogues, um, which I think people might be interested in as well for Earth Day, where you actually let uh, your teen advisory group or other teens in the libraries uh, lead this conversation and kind of make the plans that the library and the community is using moving forward. Uh, so these dialogues, they encourage libraries to reach out to new partners, consider how to better reach underserved audiences, and better meet their patrons where they are. Um, I know that libraries are fantastic, and you all already talked to your patrons, and I have no doubt of that whatsoever. Um, the goal here really is to encourage you to take a step beyond the people you're already talking with and really push in um, to those people who aren't making it into your library. Um, if you wonder who those people might be, um, what some of our prior community dialogue sites have found um, is uh, here in Colorado, um, Mexican Americans who are first generation, they just moved here, they don't know public libraries are accessible to them, right? In Mexico, public libraries are like where the academy goes and it's the big white pillars on the hill. Uh, so they needed a physical invitation saying, no, actually libraries are for you. Um, that's true of um, other immigrant communities as well who don't realize that public libraries are open to them. Um, undocumented immigrants have the same concern. Um, they are worried that to walk into the library, they have to show you some sort of identification. And if they don't hear otherwise, they're not going to come. And I wouldn't either um, in their situation. Um, so consider these audiences um, that they might not be huge numbers. They might very much be on the fringe, um, but how can you reach out to them as well? Um, lastly, I just wanted to say this framework is constantly evolving um, by participating in the community dialogues for our planet Earth. You are participating in an ongoing research project um, where we're hoping to um, improve those guides, um, create more templates and resources uh, for libraries to use, and potentially even expand these out to other informal education venues um, who can help with these in the future. Lick. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to throw some buzzwords up here. Um, this is very much uh, for those of you who are in the kind of the grant funded world. Um, you've heard the idea of learning ecosystems and you've heard everyone talking about we need to make a collective impact. Collective impact is really hard. 
I don't wanna say that any of us are doing that right now, um, but we really do feel when you combine learning ecosystems, strong community engagement, which is what you lovely folks in libraries do, um, and this idea of community dialogue and involving the community, especially underrepresented and underserved members in the work you're doing starts to make the first step uh, towards that collective impact. Uh, just really quick, wanted to share, um, this is from uh, two different dialogues, but at the same library, um, some of the lovely things that one of our partners has said about these dialogues. Um, so Lisa said, there's no doubt that the community dialogues are beneficial to all parties. I think this method should be employed more often when we're considering all kinds of services, initiatives, and programs for our community. Um, I, I wanted to share this because Lisa is a rock star that I'm sure a lot of you know her. She does all kinds of community engagement events and community talking and listening events. Um, but this particular structure that focuses on um, surfacing the underserved audiences and really picking um, a key focus for your community is different, I think, than what a lot of folks do. Um, and it's why she liked this model um, in addition uh, to the other sort of community engagement things she was doing. Um, so Lisa's actually done this um, a couple of times now. This picture right here is actually just from last weekend. Um, and what I really love about it is we've got a really good mix of community leaders and members um, and members who are striving to be leaders. Um, so that fellow, the fellow talking there right now is the head of an after-school program. Uh, the two ladies in front, the one with the little girl on her lap, uh, those are homeschool moms who were really excited to come and work with Lisa uh, to build programs um, for their kids and the rest of the community who, um, as they said, might not have as much time to get this stuff done. We have time, but we don't have the funds. But does the library have the place where we can get stuff done? Go ahead, the next one. So the part everyone's been afraid of, and please don't be afraid because it's not scary, the requirements. So number one, and this is the requirement to get your cool game, right? I'm sending you all the game regardless of what happens, um, but requirements to get your game. Uh, I need you to participate in a webinar. Check, you guys have already won. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer is checking you off her little list. Um, I will need you to complete a brief community dialogue reflection report. Uh, so this link will be emailed to you. It'll just be like a survey monkey couple questions um, and post it on the website next week ish. Again, we're flexible too. Um, and the point of that, again, is this is part of an ongoing research project to make this framework better for other folks um, and your thoughts on this process and the training of this process. Um, is really helpful to us. Um, we'll also send you a link that can be distributed uh, to patrons, community partners, or your other staff who might have participated in the dialogue but weren't involved in the planning. Again, you'll probably get that um, in an email around next week or the week after. Um, and again, there's no real time limit um, for getting these things to me. If you're doing your community dialogue in April, great, maybe send me the stuff in May. Um, if you can't do your dialogue till June or July, totally fine. This does not have to be right on Earth Day um, to work for us or for you. And then lastly, um, send us pictures if you can, uh, because I'd love to showcase other libraries um, when we're promoting this in the future. So we got through that so quick, guys. This is going to be like a half hour webinar, and I hope you're really proud of me for being able to do that. <laughs> so now's the time for people who can to unmute and those who can't to go ahead and chat in the box. Um, I just want to know why you guys want to do a dialogue. If the answer was, Annie, because you made a cool game and I want it, that's fine. But if you had a better answer, <laughs> I'd also like to hear that. Again, feel free to unmute and just shout on out. I know a lot of you, so I'll call on you if you don't talk, so be careful. This is Anita. Yeah. And I've been working also with Harwood at mm -hmm. doing dialoguing. And so one, I'm just trying to get as much experience, as much information about different ways of dialoguing, mm -hmm. but also we're excited about Earth Day and the 50th anniversary and looking at ways we can engage our community. I'm sort of in an odd position because we're in a community that is not, um, it doesn't have any central government where mm. we, we don't have other than the school system and us, there's not much here. Yeah. So I'm just looking for different ideas of, mm. of what we can do. 
Excellent. And I'm so glad that you brought up the Harwood model. Um, so we actually borrowed some things for those of you who are familiar with it from the Harwood model um, for our guide. Um, so the main things are like the idea of having a community table conversation, right? So these dialogues aren't what I'm doing right now. It's not standing in front of the room and giving a lecture, right? It's people having a conversation and sometimes fighting because that's what you do at the kitchen table, right? Um, the main difference between what we're doing and the Harwood one is we realize, and I'm sure you agree since you've tried it, um, the Harwood one is a lot of steps um, and it's a lot of moving pieces. So we were really trying to make a more um, flexible, off the shelf, kind of dip your toes in. And then if you really like this, you can move on and do some of the more complicated things. So thank you so much um, for mentioning that because I think that that's a really good, a really good model if you have time to do it. Um, as far as, as you said, being in a community where it's kind of you guys and, and the school, um, as I'm sure you already know, um, schools are great partners. What I really like about Earth Day though, is people you wouldn't expect. I'm not sure if you're in a, a rural or an urban area, but um, we've had library staff uh, work with farmers on their community dialogues and their STEM programming, right? Talking about, uh, apparently they use drones on the farm and GPS and all of this. And um, everyone cares about the planet, even if we don't all agree on some of the politics behind how we care for the planet. It doesn't matter how liberal or conservative you are. Um, <laughs> the, the things happening outside matter to everyone. And I think it's a really good way uh, to bring folks together and potentially find those new partners that were hesitant to work with you before. Uh, Bridget, I love you. Bridget says, I'll try anything once. And that's why we know her because she gets all of our stuff. because <laughs> She'll try anything once. Um, maybe even try it twice. Who knows? Uh, Kathy says we're trying to build more community relationships. Um, and she thinks this will help. Um, definitely. So what I will say, um, so we've done these dialogues or supported about 100 libraries in doing these dialogues. Um, and many of them have told us that they've developed long-term partnerships, right? Like to the level yes. of, I have an MOU signed, right? Um, people have gotten funding because of these dialogues. Someone has shown up to the conversation, saw that they had something that would benefit the library. Um, some li a library, now I'm not going to tell you, well, you all get a new building. One library even got a new building out of building these relationships for the dialogue. Um, you know, maybe more like a couple robots, but someone got a building. So I'm just going to keep saying it because it was amazing. Um, and then Becky, oh, hi, Becky. Becky says, I'd like to bring more information and awareness about recycling, what's true and what is myth. Becky, that's fantastic. So if you guys aren't already there, um, Greg, could you put a link up to our Facebook page? Um, I think that that's a topic that a lot of people um, would like to share resources on. Um, I hear it all the time and I'm, I'm not really not sure what's true either, right? Like, oh, Annie, don't bother recycling. China's not taking our recycling anymore. Just throw it in the garbage. Um, or are you sure the compost actually goes anywhere? And I think that these are really regional issues. And I bet somebody else in the community um, has information about what is the best place to put all your effort. I know here in Boulder, um, it is the composting, right? The composting 100% gets done as promised, and we can see the hill that they do it on. The recycling? We don't know, unfortunately. Um, Marlena, sustainability is a very important issue in our community. We're located on a barrier island in Florida that will be affected directly by climate change. Yeah, absolutely. And again, um, you know, the, the loss of seacoast, right, has no, has no political orientation. Um, and it's sad that it's things like this that might need to bring us all together. Um, but it's, it's part of the reason why we decided to take this strategy kind of live beyond our smaller groups for Earth Day, because we really do think um, this is a great way uh, for people to kind of rally around a topic, and it's a topic everyone uh, cares about. And Marlena, I know we've got a ton of libraries in our community of practice who are in very similar situations as you. So again, uh, check out that Facebook group. Um, Greg, so I saw you posted the Sustain RT one. I was thinking our Facebook group for our planet Earth, but I like the other one too. Um, but yeah, check out these groups and just post a topic and you'll be surprised how many people have a lot of really good information and the ever popular, oh, well, my uncle's actually an environmental whatever, right? Um, <laughs> librarians know cool people is what I'm saying. Uh, Paula says the city has had good success with a World Cafe event last year about the strengths and challenges of our community. Oh, I'd love that. I'd like to do something similar but need help. Um, so Paula, I give you guys on this call right here a little secret. 
Um, we've only got about 160, well only, it's a lot. We have about 160 folks signed up to do these community dialogues, which means if anyone does um, want to have smaller group conversations or just give me or Stephanie a call um, and we can talk through some of the things other libraries have done. Um, we're very familiar with the World Cafe events, with the, um, oh gosh, the science pub brew, wow, words, words, Stephanie. Words are hard. <laughs> she's here to help me with words and now she's not talking. Um, we're very familiar with a lot of these events and um, we can direct you to other libraries who have done them as well. Um, I think we've actually got some posts on our uh, blog as well about some of these different sorts of events. So please don't feel like this one hour webinar um, is all the help that we'll provide in doing these things. And don't think that it's just for Earth Day as well. If two years from now you say, wow, Annie, um, I wasn't really into that dialogue thing you told me about two years ago, but can we try it now? We're in. Vicki, oh my gosh, I just know everybody here. Uh, Vicki says, we're working with several organizations on a grassland prairies and prairie bird exhibit and event and thought this would be a good addition. That's fantastic. So Vicki, are these things that are like getting crowdsourced from in your community? Sorry, put me on the spot because that sounds really cool. Um, well, yes, awesome. So yeah, well, Vicki's answering that. We've seen that a lot. Um, now, not everybody has the space to bring in like one of our Starnet traveling exhibits, but your community all has stuff that they're so proud of. Um, one of the libraries we worked with was NASA at my library. So, I'm so glad you brought this up because I would have forgotten. Um, they were, the librarian was uh, the antithesis of me. She was not a talker. She was kind of a shy, quiet person. Um, and this was actually a requirement for their grant. And she was really concerned about having to invite all these people and talk to them and how could you possibly make me do this? You're such a jerk. Um, and what she ended up doing, which I thought was so cool, um, is she did adult show and tell. Um, so what that meant is people in the community were encouraged to bring some natural thing or some you know, NASA artifact thing, like an Apollo patch or something, bring something that's meaningful to you and let's talk in our community about the meaningful assets and resources we have and then try to plan something around that. So they actually ended up making a whole exhibit um, about the cool artifacts and rocks and meteorites um, and stuffed animals like Vicki um, that they found in their community. And she didn't have to say like a peep during that conversation. So again, uh, just highlighting the flexible nature um, of this idea um, and that it's really, what can it do to help you, right? If what you need is your community to get excited and rally around an exhibit, then fine, do that. Uh, Becky, our library is adopting a section of the local trail It'll launch on Earth Day, something new for us. That's so cool. Um, is it, I'm assuming this trail is uh, really close to your library. I'm just wondering like, will you like go on your lunch break and go pick up trash? Cause that'd be cute. <laughs> And Kathy up above said oh, we're trying to, yeah, trying to build more community relationships. Oh, yes, absolutely. Huge. All right, can you go to the next question? Thank you, guys. Click. Um, so here's always the big one. Who will you invite? Um, so on our community dialogue site, Greg, if you wouldn't mind. Um, oh, no worries, Paula. Uh, Greg, if you wouldn't mind posting the uh, link into the community dialogue guide, that would be great. Um, so we have a list on there of the types of people that libraries have invited to dialogues in the past, um, but I definitely didn't have a Joe the Sandwich Shop guy before, and he turned out to be one of the most important uh, people to invite. So um, if anyone wants to uh, interject and let us know who you might be inviting, or again, go ahead and stick it there in the chat box. I'm hoping there's enough of us on the call um, we can give each other some good ideas. Stephanie, do you have one good idea while people are typing? Uh, so something, <laughs> yeah, something that I learned in my previous job is that, you know, if you meet with somebody or you talk to someone who is interested but can't do it, always ask them, well, do you know someone who can? So just in case you get hit with a no, which can happen, uh, especially if this is your first time doing it, you really don't know your community. Um, definitely be like, well, okay, you can't come. Do you know someone who would be interested? Is there someone else I should talk to? Questions like that, like follow up, people are always willing to give, kind of throw someone else under the bus, as it were. Um, and you never know how that chain link will lead up to someone like the mayor or your <laughs> county commissioner or things like that. So mm -hmm. just always ask, is there somebody else, even if you get a yes, is there someone else I should talk to? Mm -hmm. um, and you never know who you might get. 
Yeah, and she mentioned the mayor. We've definitely had people, you know, get the mayors all the way down to, you know what, we decided to invite our janitor because he really sees what's going on in the library. And boy, did he. Um, wow, that sounded really nerdy. Boy, did he. Um, <laughs> does anyone else have any suggestions? So I'll go through some of the ones um, that are on our website while you guys are typing. Um, so things like the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So again, I always look at these more from a um, who are the underserved audiences we can help bring all of our great library services to. Um, so Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, cult Commerce, cultural centers, churches, um, you can invite churches to things, it's totally okay. Um, with the idea that um, it's really hard to market to the individual, you know, mom who might have just come here from Honduras, uh, because she doesn't trust you, but she does trust those leaders um, that represent her community. So how do you partner with those leaders um, to increase um, the invitingness, that's a word, um, to their constituents? So Kathy said, we have a group called Sustainable Head and Field um, that would probably be interested. Yeah, totally. Um, all of those kind of environmental, I'm going to call them environmental nerds because I'm one of them, uh, so I'm allowed. They will be so excited to see other people having these conversations um, and to get to be part of them and bring their handouts and help people figure out how to compost or whatever it is um, that particular group does. That's fantastic. Um, school teachers are great. I know it's really hard, especially as we're getting towards the end of the year. Um, so if you don't want to, um, bother your local school teacher think about your local retired school teacher who all of a sudden doesn't have all of these great people to talk to anymore um oh, blank mind blank who else have we invited uh we the libraries yeah. <laughs> so uh local business leaders mm -hmm. um so you know hispanic chamber of commerce your regular chamber of commerce also look at other um volunteer groups rotary clubs Kiwa uh, kiwanis um trying to think of who else your uh what's the military one the ROTC oh AFW AFWs yeah. anything like that any type of kind of local nonprofit. um if you guys have boy scout troops invite your district executive if you have girl scout troops whatever the equivalent of that is for girl scouts so Stephanie could you type in the chat the exact names of those people they should look for at those groups yeah district whatever because I've already forgotten and then one other thing Stephanie just mentioned was volunteer groups Greg would you mind putting in the websites for the night sky network and solar system ambassadors um, so if you guys aren't already familiar with these groups um, they are free NASA trained people um, who as long as you are you know pretty close to them and and um, they don't have six other events going on, they will come and do programs at your library absolutely for free. Um, if you're having them drive really far, maybe buy them dinner, but literally free service provided by NASA. So solar system ambassadors can come. So I'm a solar system ambassador. If any of you are in Colorado, you can ask for me. Um, solar system ambassadors can do normal lectures. They can do um, hands-on activities, but they love and are committed right now to coming to these community dialogues. I don't want to say to represent NASA because that's not what they do, but really to provide kind of that um, NASA science lens on some of the conversations that might be happening and again an opportunity uh, to build that relationship for the future when you might need them or want them to come do programs. Um, similar with the Night Sky Network. So the Night Sky Network are NASA volunteers who have big giant telescopes uh, that they will bring to your library. They are also committed right now um, to participating in community dialogues across the country. If you can't connect with either of these groups um, through their website, please do reach out to me or Stephanie and we can contact them directly and let them know that you guys are part of our project. Um, the third group there, and I was half listening, so I don't remember, uh, Stephanie mentioned them, the third group that's committed right now is your local Girl Scout troops. Yeah. Um, so again, examples of local folks who are impacted by the community that you're in um, who are excited to work with you right now. And thank you, Greg got um, those down there. Does anyone have like, my, my sandwich shop equivalent, right? Does anyone have someone in their community that they might think about inviting to these events that might kind of spark off the ideas for other people? If not, it's fine. We can move on to the next question. I won't quiz you later, maybe. Art organizations. Art organizations, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Not every one of you is near an, an art museum or a nature and science museum or even a little art house, but if you are, Get them. Um, talk to Starbucks too. Uh, Starbucks always likes to donate things to libraries. I'm sure you're aware of that. 
Um, but just in case you aren't, I want to make sure. Um, King Supers and Trader Joe's, so King Supers is the same as Kroger's or Ralph's, um, they um, will, like, literally no questions asked, donate, I think, up to $30 of food um, to nonprofit to any nonprofit organization, like, once a month. You literally just have to go and ask them, and you can get donuts or whatever kind of snacks you might want for your dialogue, yeah. and food is key. Uh, church groups. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So you can invite churches, but you can also go to the youth groups. You can go to the, you know, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, um, anything like that. They would probably be more than welcome to, if not come, at least, you know, point you in the right direction because mm -hmm. they're all part of other groups as well. Right. And many, um, I know this is true of high schools, but it's also true of uh, churches and synagogues. I I know for sure um, in the Jewish faith, I'm not sure about others. I think Catholicism too. Um, there is some point, right, where kids of a certain age have to do community service projects. Um, and we have had libraries have kids focus their community service projects on building this kind of dialogue framework and leading it all themselves. So how little work for you and what a wonderful thing you'd be doing for that kid. And if you do decide to do kind of more of that teen focus later on, um, Look at your high school, your key club uh, for those back east, or um, any type of community service group mm -hmm. through the high school. Um, you can definitely get some connections there, and that will. And those are usually the teens that are looking for leadership opportunities. Right. So you'll be able to really provide them something awesome. Absolutely. Next, please. Thank you. All right. And all right, so this one I know you guys will be ready for. What are the big environmental issues in your community? Somebody also mentioned, um, already mentioned recycling and not really knowing what's going on there. Um, somebody mentioned their um, coastal concerns. What are our big issues in Boulder? Um, putting you on the hot seat. I know you are putting me on the hot seat. Um, I know something they're concerned about is we've gotten a ton of snow recently uh, up in our mountains, which is great, but if it all melts at once, we had some really terrible flooding back in 2013, 2015, something like that, that wiped out like half of cities because it was so bad. So I know that's something that they talk about. They also talk about the Boulder Creek and keeping it clean and making sure that everybody has access to it. I know that's something that's very big for Boulder. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Bridget and Paula, I see you're both unmuted. So if you just want to speak up with what your local environmental issues are, feel free. Anita says people planting invasive species that are destroying local environments, flooding. Yep, flooding. Yep. I know um, when I lived in Florida and I saw somebody else from there, um, invasive species were terrible. That's why they have the boa constrictor issue in the Everglades is because people got these snakes and they got too big to handle. And so they just let them go. And some of it too was, I think, there was a hurricane and people lost their snakes. So things like that um, are, are hugely important to their communities. Uh, loss of trees to disease is a big issue. That's right, up in the mountains too, mm -hmm. they were having a uh, pine beetle was right. super bad and creating devastating fires both ac across the Western part of the US. Mm -hmm. We are getting wetter and have had record floods, problem growing conditions for farmers and vegetable growers. Yep, water quality and runoff, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's, I think everybody is concerned about water quality. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give you guys a pitch for the game you're going to get because I was just writing jokes. I, that sounded bad. Writing funny anecdotes about all of these uh, sorts of issues. Like the one big thing that I made sure to include in there um, is I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but the fact that uh, dandelions aren't actually bad plants to have. They're really good for the bees. Um, if you don't spray pesticides, pesticides on them, they're really yummy in salads. You can actually I feel, eat them. I am such the boulder hippie, but yes, you can eat your dandelions. Um, but yeah, those kinds of things though, like that people don't think about, like how cool to just like print out a couple little signs like about things like that in the library that people would definitely not think about. I didn't yeah. know about any of that till recently. So Paula, good point. Uh, getting farmers to participate after March is nearly impossible. My yep. cousin's a farmer uh, up in Northern Colorado. And yeah, he's already starting to till the fields and starting to get things ready. So this is something where you can do it now, but you can also, this is not a one-off. You can do one six months from now or right after the harvest or things mm -hmm. like that and be able to- bring or, or just save it and just do it six months from now. Like I'd much rather you guys do this and get what you need out of it um, then feel like oh Annie sent me my game so I need to do my community dialogue right now you don't <laughs> yeah but if you have a specific group that you're thinking of and yeah they're going to be busy here soon 
one of the great things too is to start that conversation to reach out to them go talk to them find out when would you like to talk and they may be able mm -hmm. to give you a better time frame and that could help you out absolutely any more thoughts on this one these are all really good issues really bad issues but really good conversation yeah <laughs> really good topics there we go let's go ahead to the next one then um, so again, this is the uh, topic area that's closest to my heart. Um, so are there any barriers in your library right now um, preventing folks from participating in this conversation? Um, so I'll give the big obvious example that I know um, most of you are aware of and most of you don't have any power to solve, um, which is the idea of needing library cards to access library services, right? Because undocumented Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> okay, I think we froze for a second. I oh, noticed sorry. that. You all, you all missed my soapbox, but the moral of the story, are there people in your community who would benefit from these conversations who might have a hard time either physically getting to them or feeling welcome at them? And if you don't know the answer, this is not at all a bad thing. This is an opportunity to reach out to community partners and social services. I'm sure some of you have social workers in your library um, to figure out who these folks are. Anita, yes and yes. Do you have any elaborations? Um, I assume that's the answer for everyone. <laughs> and again, feel free to talk, guys. You don't just have to type. We are just, we are very rural area, <clears throat> and and though, you know, the community itself has 500 people living in it, but we we service um, four or five other small communities that come in, but there's still an astounding number of people, who, even though we've been here 10 years, who have absolutely never walked in this library and never don't don't have any idea what's here and it's not like we don't you know we we do um facebook and twitter and newspapers and radio and you know we do it all but for whatever reason they still just don't know <laughs> and i don't know how to reach them um i'm sure you've heard of this but i've heard of really cool programs um I, to be fair, mostly in larger cities, I think, um, where the libraries who are having that problem just kind of like, you know, on a day off or whatever, set up shop in a totally different location, like a, a laundromat or the grocery store um, or a park or whatever, um, to show people like, hey, this is the library. Look, I have robots. I have programs. I'm not just books. Or if you like books, I'm books too. Um, and again, I know that that's easier with uh, bigger uh, communities, but yeah, it's really hard when people kind of have in their heads that either you're, you don't exist or you're a service they don't need because I have the internet for that. Um, and just not knowing what all you have to offer. That's my other soapbox. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Becky says, people work so many hours. I try to offer food after, for after work events, childcare, and everyone going different mm -hmm. directions. That's a really good point, Becky. And that's why I showed that picture from the dialogue that just happened in Broward. Um, folks are really concerned, like, I can't come if I can't bring my kids. Is this appropriate? And, you know, Lisa just threw a bunch of robots and Legos in the corner. The kids came and talked sometimes. Like, it's totally fine. And I think letting people know that it's an open environment that's realistic, right? Um, if that's something that you can do is great. Uh, Vicki says, we're also a rural library and have the same community awareness issues. We've been doing farmer's markets for the past two years. That's fantastic. That's actually, um, when we moved here uh, to Erie, not Boulder, um, we got our uh, library card at a farmer's market. So fantastic. Any other suggestions or ideas in this area? And again, if you don't know who's not coming, great opportunity to reach out and talk to folks. 
um, talk to teachers, talk to social workers, um, like talk to immigration services, talk to the police, I don't know, talk to whoever yeah. who, who might have an idea of what direction to point you in. Or work with the community you have if you need to work with them too. Again, flexible. So I think, I'm not sure what's next. Go ahead to the next one. All right, yes. Yeah, so to access a bunch of these resources that we've been talking about, so this includes invitation templates. So oh, Annie says I should invite all of these fancy schmancy people. How the heck do I do that? We have a template for you. You can just put names in and send it off and it'll be great. Um, we have the community dialogue guide, um, kind of the regular one and then the teen focused one, if anyone is interested in that. Oh my gosh, Paula's gonna reach out to a local beekeeper and that's my new official favorite thing and it's getting added to the list. Okay. Um, we've got pictures you can use in your publicity. So any of the pictures that you see on this website, um, you are free to use if you're saying, hey, we're having a community dialogue and people don't know what that looks like, use one of these pictures to show them what it looks like. Um, there's a bunch of other resources in here too, um, including some of the um, papers and other models like Harwood um, that we based some of our work on. Um, feel free to browse through there. Uh, let Stephanie or I, or I know um, if you have any questions or you want to have a separate conversation. Um, again, our intent here is just to encourage you guys to reach out in perhaps different ways than the ways that you already are. Um, I, I really have no firm deadlines about when you send me reports or when you do your dialogue um, or you can't have your game unless you do your dialogue. Just do what you can and we'll see what happens. That's kind of where we're at right now and I think that's a pretty good place to be. Uh, so one last slide, I think. Um, and the, oops, too far. <laughs> ah! um, <laughs> the other thing that we wanted to make sure that you all were all aware of, which I hope you are, um, is our STEM activity clearinghouse. So again, some of our library staff who didn't want to um, have a formal conversation and they were kind of scared, um, what they did instead was they set up a bunch of stations around their library and they had some of our cool activities at one station and then a question with sticky notes um, at the next and then an activity and then a question with sticky notes. Um, so dialogue doesn't even have to be spoken, right? Uh, if you want people to write down stuff or if you want to have a semi-permanent semi board in your wall where you have rotating questions, um, again, uh, for me, this is a research project. For you, this is what works best for your community. Um, so please do feel free uh, to try any of that out. Um, Stephanie, would you mind putting our email addresses in the chat real quick? And while Stephanie's doing that, um, we will open it up to any other questions or comments. And I do want to thank you uh, for taking the time out of your day uh, to work on this kind of new and strange idea with us. We're very excited to see you all. And if you don't have any other questions, this recording will be posted um, in the webinar section of our website in a day or two. Um, we'll post the chat, chat transcript as well, so you can get all those email addresses and all the links that were posted um, and the great ideas uh, that people shared as well. I'm wondering if anybody else is experiencing STEM overload. <laughs> um, we seem to have had a drop off in the number of families coming to our science programs, and I don't know if the kids are getting more in school than they used to and they aren't interested, or if it's us or what. I, I have heard that. Yeah, as other... I say, I don't know if it was you who posted it on the STEM programming librarian <laughs> site, um, but um, somebody posted that the other day, and what I've heard, and it's so funny because it's like such a shift from Everyone how we were using. encouraging all of this before is people were saying, well, great. Yeah, now I do an art activity and then I break out the robot, right? Because like the kids are, the kids want to come do the art stuff, right? So um, don't tell uh, our boss I said this, but gosh, I'd much rather you guys are doing fun hands-on stuff with things and the kids are coming than worry about if they're getting a STEM activity or not. Yeah, Bridget said that um, that she thinks that that's a little likely too. And Nita um, says everyone people are getting is doing overwhelmed. Some. So you guys do STEAM, <laughs> right? Do art. Um, I, I hear there's a lot of good art that can be done around the planet Earth. Like, don't don't stick to STEM because you think that's what you're supposed to be doing. I'm totally yeah. gonna get fired. Uh, <laughs> but you know, do what works for your patrons, right? And that's um, with the community dialogues. That's really the angle I think we've been pushing to. Uh, when we started them, it really was around STEM topics. But I could really care less. It's about reaching out to different patrons and reaching them in new ways. So um, 
I know I'm not your director and I don't make the rules, but you certainly have our permission to go do art and make people happy and, um, you know, fit stuff in where it fits. Everything doesn't have to be a robot. I feel like someone possessed my body to say all right. of that, but. <laughs> well, and the thing too is I come from an, I actually come from an art background and there is so many ways STEM and art actually merge together and coexist. Mm -hmm. So there are great ways that, yeah, you can use art to teach STEM and have the kids not even realize that's exactly. happening. All right, so we won't keep you guys any longer. If anyone wants to stick around and ask another question or two or make a comment, feel free. Otherwise, uh, you're all, well, you are all ready, but you're all free to go. Um, and we hope to hear back from you soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Becky says she likes the activity station idea. Oh, good. Yay. I'll stop sharing. <laughs> 